All right, so go ahead and sit in Swastikasana where you pull your feet in back closer to the blankets. And I'm personally feeling just sitting here at the beginning right now, having just had my grueling commute out of bed down the hallway into the yoga room that my groins are a little tight. So I'm going to add a little bit more height for myself. And just by doing that, my knees went down a little bit lower and I can actually feel that there's a little bit of release that came into the groin just because I sat a little higher. So if you have another blanket and you want to experiment with that, you can do that. Also, um, there's a little bit more ease in the lower back uh, when you sit up higher. It's also the things that are good about sitting on the floor, so you can also experiment with that sometime. But take your hand and put your thumb on your big toe base joint of the leg that's one leg, it doesn't really matter which one, and turn the foot up toward the ceiling or the sole of the foot. Then move your thumb to the space between the base joint of the big toe and the others and walk your fingers more underneath your foot and turn again and you should get a little bit more fully on the top of the foot. It's not exactly like a Virasana foot, but it's pretty close. Then do the same thing on the other side. Turn the foot, putting the big toe on the base joint. Then walk your fingers a little more underneath your foot. Move your thumb to the space between the base joints and turn again and observe what effect that has. For me, I get more release in the groin, a little bit more lift in the chest. Then get your calf flesh moving up toward the ceiling. I don't feel a lot from that one. It mostly just releases the tightness, the kind of pressure on the calf. But now that I think about it, that did give me a little bit more width in the groin. And then use your hands to externally rotate the thigh, starting at the top of the thigh and moving down toward the knee. And do the same thing on the other leg. That adjustment for me further releases the grind, but even more importantly, it puts my, my weight more on the sitting, but the sitting bones move in. And so everything moves to the midline and there's more lift that comes into the chest. All right, then having made just those external adjustments, now press your feet down into the floor and energetically lift your ankles up. So you'll feel some firmness come into the hips and more lift come into the chest. Lengthen up through your side ribs all the way up into the armpits. Maintain that height and roll your shoulder bones back. Bring your shoulder blades closer together on your back, away from the neck and into the center of the body and up a little bit so you feel that chest get nice and lifted and broad. Then keeping your outer hips firm, keeping the sides of the torso long and your chest well lifted, close your eyes and fold your palms together to your heart. And use those thumbs to lift the center of the sternum up and the forearms to lift the whole rib cage up and feel even more lift and broadness in the collarbone. And also a corresponding release of the trapezius away from the neck. Follow that movement of the trapezius away from the neck with your mind. And then as you inhale, make yourself taller from the tailbone all the way up through the head. Maintain that height, and as you exhale, move the prana, or the energy of the breath, outward toward your side ribs and armpits. Inhale, make yourself tall. Keep that height. Exhale, make yourself broad. Inhale, extend yourself. Exhale, expand yourself. Feel the inner prana, or the inner energy of the breath, filling the space, the external space, or the external structure of your pose. And follow the exhalation with your mind to that internal spaciousness that you've created for yourself. Find that still quiet place front within. And then let's chant three arms together. Um, um, um. Follow that sound with your mind. Follow the reverberation of the sound with your mind. And from that space, inhale once more. Um. 
Keeping your chest well lifted and broad, bring your chin down to your chest and your hands down to your thighs with your palms up. And then raise your head and open your eyes. All right, go ahead and stay in Swastikasana and stretch your arms out in front of you. And then interlace your fingers and turn your palms toward me. Extend from the elbows through the wrist bones. And then push a little bit more through the thumb of the first finger and pull your little finger back and feel how that tucks that outer shoulder blade in, our shoulder muscles in a little bit more. But then you may need to re-straighten your arms and lift your arms all the way up above your head. Press the feet down and energetically lift the ankles up. Continue that lift all the way up through the side ribs, all the way through the armpits. Lift up from the elbows through the wrist bones and make yourself tall. See if you can move your arms just a tiny bit further back behind your ears and then lift up even more or suck your elbows in one more time. Feel how much taller you've gotten in the sides of the torso by this initial lift and keep that height in the torso as much as you can as you bring your fingernails down to the foot down and switch the grip of your fingers. <clears throat> so the other finger goes on top and turn your palms back toward the screen. It's a little tough on the wrist, so if you can't uh, quite do that with the wrist, you can just uh, stretch your arms out straight and forget about the stretching of the wrist and the fingers, but it's really good to do, particularly with all of the time on the computer that we're all interacting with our external world with. Be sure to work the just these basic shoulder stretches every day, even several times a day. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. And lift up. When you lift up, really extend from those elbows through the wrist bone so that the whole arm is really lifting to work to create space in the sides of the torso and opening in the shoulders. All right, and then keep that height that you've created and bring your hands all the way down. Feel how you get extra lift in the chest, extra lift in the side ribs from just, amazingly, just from having done one overhead stretch with your arms or pose with your arms. All right, then stretch your legs out in front of you into Dandasana. If you have a brick and you want to put it between your feet, you're welcome to do so. I like to do that partly because it gives me a little bit more release in the groin, but also particularly in the mornings when my, you know, maybe my mind-body connection is not fully awake yet, hasn't done very much. Having something really tactile to push into and then spread my toes wide apart away from that big toe actually kind of wakes up the muscles for me. Then from the little toe side of the foot, draw all the way up into your outer hips. Put your right hand on the outside of your right knee and your left hand on the blanket behind you. Keep working your leg muscles and lengthen up through the side ribs. Make yourself tall from the tailbone all the way up through the head. And then as you exhale and turn, push on your hand, push on the leg with your hand. But with the blankets, you're actually pulling on the blankets toward the wall that you're twisting from. Okay? So the front hand pushes and the back hand, sorry, pushes against the leg and the back hand pulls on the blanket and both of that arm work helps you turn your torso more. All right, keep your leg action going. Inhale, lift up, make yourself tall. And then as you exhale, push and pull with your hands to bring the torso around. Just let your neck do what it wants to do for now. Then on the last inhalation, lengthen up, exhale, turn and rotate. Then go ahead and turn your head if you can a little bit more and after doing that, you may find if you push and pull again, you get a little bit more rotation coming from the twist. Now, when you twist back to the center, push down on your leg, down on the blanket, so you use the arms to make yourself taller as you come back to the center. Check back then at your leg muscles and make sure that they're still nice and firm and engaged. And put your left hand on the outside of the right knee, right hand on the blankets behind you. Keep extending out through the inner heels as you lengthen up from the tailbone all the way up through the head. And as you exhale, push with your hands against the leg. Pull with your hands in your blanket and rotate yourself around. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, turn and rotate. Inhale, lengthen up from the tailbone all the way up through the head. Exhale, turn and rotate. One more time, inhale, lift up, make yourself tall. And then exhale, turn and rotate yourself around again. Pushing with your hand and pulling with your hand. In that last exhalation, go ahead and turn your head as much as it will and push and pull one more time and see if you can get a little more rotation and push down on the blankets, down with your legs as you come all the way back up to the center and come back into Dandasana. 
All right, now I got the second side of Swastikasana. So whichever leg you brought in first, you're gonna do the other leg. Place your hand on the outside, inside of your knee. And just fold that foot underneath the hamstring. The heel really is underneath the hamstring and the foot should be back toward the blankets that you're sitting on. And actually, if you go ahead and do that foot turn right now, you'll get a little even more access to it. Push with your thumb and turn. Move your thumb to the divot between the base joints and your fingers underneath and turn and rotate again. Then bring your other leg in. Same thing with the feet. Turn it around the tops of the feet. Turn your calves and turn your thighs. Okay, so get everything organized again. And in doing that, what I actually feel is just that there's an additional lift coming all the way into the chest. This is Dante coming in. This is Puppy Guthrie. Oh, it's a kiss kiss. Dante likes the TV. I don't think Guthrie. <laughs> okay, you're going to take that for me? Okay. All right. Hi, guys. Have a good time. All right, <laughs> stretch your arms out in front of you. Pull one thumb against the other. And then another way of stretching the arms, fingers and the shoulders. This one really targets the thumb, which gets very tight. Hey, Dante, leave it. Go. Come on. And then pull your thumbs against each other and feel how that draws the elbows in. Keep pulling your thumbs against each other as you bring your hands all the way up. Thank you, Jeff. Keep it pulling the thumbs against each other, stretch through the ring fingers, reach your arms up so you feel that link coming into the side ribs. You should also feel your abdomen draw in toward the spine. I also really like the stretch because it gets the top of the shoulders, top of the shoulder blades, it's easier on the wrist. So maintain that height that you got in the sides of the torso as you bring your hands down. Put the opposite thumb over the thumb and then pull your thumbs against each other and extend through your ring fingers. Keep pulling your thumbs against each other as you reach your hands all the way up above your head. Pull your thumbs against each other, stretch through the ring fingers, make yourself tall, move your arms back behind your ears, reach up again, and then come all the way down. Put your hands on your thighs again and feel the vitality coming up into the armpits. I also feel more stability of the shoulder blades on the back, just from having done that. Okay, stretch your legs out again into Dandasana. You can use the brick or not the brick. Spread your toes against each other. Sorry, push your big toes against each other. Spread your other toes wide apart. Yeah. All right, so those were uh, Swastikasana. Let's also do Sukhasana because we're gonna work with uh, both foot positions today. So again, those of you, I mean, I do this a fair bit, but I haven't focused on it a lot regularly. Get similar pose, Swastikasana, had the foot flat. I'm just seeing who else popped in if I need to say hello to anyone. All right, welcome everyone. Got it, okay. Radhika, welcome, all right. That's who I didn't see, and who is this right here? Pratima is also here, wonderful. All right, I think everyone else I've said hello to. No, who's that? Ka Sugi, welcome, hello. Okay, it is great to see everyone. All right. Okay, so I think all of you know this, but in, in Sukhasana, when you bring your leg in, the foot stays in the same position as Dandasana. Okay? So you're really on that little toe side of the foot. And also the foot is more underneath the knee, not tucked all the way back in. So your knees, feet are underneath your knees. You're right on the little toe side of the foot. Really extend from the inner knee through the inner heel. Move your calf flesh still, move your thigh flesh still, and come into sit uh, Sukhasana. This one for me gives me a lot more feeling of firmness in the outer hips, particularly if I really keep on drawing out from the little toe side of the foot into the outer hips. Okay. Now reach your arms all the way up, another uh, side stretch and shoulder stretch. Put your right, take your left hand with your right, re left wrist with your right hand, and reach up and pull. Use one arm to help get more length on that side of the torso. Keep extending through the feet so you're on the little toe side of the foot, and then tip over to the side. Okay. Now as you tip over, really pull with that opposite arm. And what happens when I do that is I feel 
the stretch coming all the way down to the side part of the pelvis and that hip crease, right? So that's really where the torso begins and you're really accessing that length. Now, when you come back to the center, pull even more so you get taller when you come back to the center. And switch the grip of your hands and pull up again. Pull up through the right side of your body. Now, as you tip over, keep pulling and feel how that stretch moves all the way from the base of the pelvis as you reach up through the armpits, through the ribs, through the armpits, all the way into the fingers. And keep pulling as you come all the way back up to the center. And then release your hands all the way down. And sit here again and feel the opening that comes across the collarbones and the lift that comes into the chest. Check back into your feet and make sure they're still doing their thing. Their thing is doing Dandasana. <laughs> and stretch your legs out again into Dandasana. Make yourself fall. Yeah, my legs are definitely uh, waking up. And so now I'm getting more feeling of lift in the quadriceps, more feeling of lift in the, in the, in the inner thighs. All right, do your opposite side. Bring the opposite leg in underneath. Actually, I don't think I switched them. Doesn't matter, I guess. Make the adjustments that you need to adjust. Lengthen up through the side ribs. All right now we're gonna do a twist in Sukhasana. So take your right hand to the outside of the left knee. Left hand back in the blankets behind you. As you inhale, lengthen up for the tailbone all the way up through the head. And as you exhale, turn and rotate yourself around to the right or whatever for you, I guess it'd be the left. Inhale, lift, if you're mirroring me, lift up. And then exhale, turn and rotate. Feel how the twist feels different in the bent leg pose as opposed to the straight leg pose. As you inhale, lift up, make yourself tall. Exhale, turn and rotate again. Again, pushing with your hand against your leg, pulling with your head on the blanket to get yourself maximally turned. And see if turning the head just gives you a little bit more beyond the maximum turn. Push down with the blankets, down with your hand on the leg as you come all the way back up to the center. Feel how the twist actually enables the spine to grow longer, or feel longer at least. Right, and then go to the other side. Press your hand against your leg, pull with your hand on the blanket and begin to turn. Be sure you're still extending from the inner knee through the inner heel. Lift up and make yourself tall. Exhale, turn and rotate yourself around again. Lengthen and lift up. Exhale, turn and rotate. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, turn and rotate. Turn one more time and turn your head and then push and pull with your arms again. All right, and then come all the way back to the center. Stretch your legs out into Dandasana again. All right, then take your right hand on the inside of your right knee and pull the leg up into half Baddha And then do the same thing with your other leg. So, you know, Baddha we work those two foot positions um, and other ones too. But let's start off doing the foot position where you're right on the little toe side of the foot. Okay. Push the big toe side of your foot against each other, but particularly push through the heels against each other. When you really push the heels against each other as hard as you can, really, it's, it's not a casual action. You should feel that outer lower uh, femur bone kind of move in more. Now, as you do that, you'll also feel some width coming into the groin. Okay. And that, again, those, thi those things, the firmness of the outer hips and the release of the inner leg are related. Okay. The more you can have, let's say, stir or stability in the outer hips, the more you can create access for more sukha of the inner groin. Okay. And that sukha has kind of three points. Oh, sorry, Carolyn, I haven't been. Um, this is Baddha Konasana, down angle pose. Sukha means ease. Okay? Stira means stability. Okay? And in the Yoga Sutras, Patanjali says that asana is both stira and sukha. Okay? That what we're looking for in any yoga, there are lots of ways to interpret that, but what we're looking for in any yoga pose, really on any level of our existence, is a feeling of stira, stability, which we get by pushing the heels together, and also a sense of ease, hopefully more release in the inner groin as you're sitting here. But you should also try and find it on levels beyond the physical level. You know, when we have stability of our outer body, the breath can move 
with more ease, with more sukha. Okay, keep pushing your heels together as we're sitting here. And you may feel that your knees move a little bit further apart from each other. You also need to find a way to have mental stability in each pose. So, you know, so your mind can remain focused on the things that it wants to do. But there should also be some ease in, in the mental plane, too. We shouldn't just feel like, oh, this is a horrible pose. Yeah. But that relates to the emotional level as well. Yeah. Okay. So place your hands on the outside of your knees, pull your knees together, come back into Dandasana, staff pose. And you should feel when you're, I can feel when I'm in Dandasana, after that Bhattakanasana, my inner groins descended down toward the floor a little bit more. So the width of Bhattakanasana is also related to getting depth in the groin. Right? All right, then take your right hand, the in, left hand on the inside of the left knee and bring that leg up. Okay, come into the Bhattakanasana foot position first. Okay, that, I mean, sorry, Dandasana foot position first. That just means you're on the little toe side of the foot. Now, you can maintain the pressure of the little toe side of the foot pushing against each other so you have that stability. But now work on turning your feet like we did in that opening Swastikasana. Okay? So that there's a version of Bhattakanasana also, the foot full pose, where the feet are really fully open okay, on the floor. And then there's also a version of the full pose where he rests his belly on his feet. Okay, so you can also work that way. So with that idea in mind that this has a forward bending component as well, go ahead and let yourself lean forward a little bit. Particularly if you're on some height, it'll be easier to get your feet. And then you can start with the big toe base joint, but also see what happens when you push from that divot between the big toe base joint and the other toes you might get a little bit more opening. Now keep, even though you're opening the feet, keep pushing the little toe side of your foot very firmly against each other. So you get both that stira, that stability of the outer hip, even as you're working here with this foot position to get more opening in the groin. Right? The Dandasana foot, and this is a Sukhasana foot, or a Padmasana foot, really. Could y'all feel the difference in those two foot positions in the Baddha Konasana work? Yes. They're both good. Yeah. It's not like one is right and one is wrong. It's good to do both. Yeah. And stretch your legs out again into Dandasana. All right, for this next one, I need to, uh, I come off to the blanket because I don't need any much height for Baddha Konasana, I mean for Upavishta Konasana. So I'm personally sliding off my blanket. Some of you may need still a little bit of support for this particular one, but bring your legs out wide. Move your buttock flesh out of the way. But you still wanna feel that your sitting bones are coming in toward each other, so you really have to draw up from the heel all the way up into the outer hips. Okay, this one's got um, the Dandasana foot position which just means that it's our Tadasana foot mountain pose. Uh, Upavishta meet Konasana means wide apart angle pose. Okay. And the angle again refers to the angle that the leg is coming out of the body. Okay. And interestingly, if you go back from here into Baddha Konasana of either one, it, the angle of the leg doesn't really change. Okay, so that's why this one is called Bhattakanasana, because the front leg binds the angle of the back leg. Right? Yeah. And if you go back out to Upavishta Konasana, wide apart pose, wide leg, the angle of the thigh is exactly the same. Now from the little toe side of the foot, draw all the way up into the outer hip, so you feel that outer hip get firmer. Maintain that as you stretch your arms out in front of you. Interlace your fingers and turn your palms toward me. Extend from the elbows through the wrist bone and pull your little finger back so your outer shoulder blade tucks in. And then reach up into Parvatasana and Upavishta Konasana. Now keep extending out through your legs and from that outward sort of extension outward, feel how much lift you can get up through the sides of the torso and the armpits. And you should also, in this leg position, feel more of a sense of the Uddiyana Bandha, the abdomen drawing in and up, the taller you get. And maintain the link, work of the legs, maintain the length of the sides of the torso, and bring your hand all the way down. Switch the grip of your fingers. 
and turn your palms toward me. Extend from the elbows through the wrist bones and reach your arms all the way up again. Also keep pulling on the little finger down to the outer shoulders. Now really extend out through your legs, through the heels, but from the little toe side of the foot, pull all the way up into the outer hips and continue that pull of the outer leg up through the side ribs and all the way up into the armpits, make yourself tall. Not a bad idea, whoever's twisting from side to side. Good. Yeah, we could all even do that. You could twist to one side and get lots of length, but really straighten your arms as you're doing that. Come back to the other side, lengthen to the other side. It feels really good. <laughs> yeah, look almost like you're a wave of water going through. <laughs> and then come back down. And bring your legs all the way up into Dandasana again. Then bend your knees. Come on to your hands and your knees. All right, spread your palms well. So be a nice feeling downward facing dog because we've done some shoulder work and some uh, groin and leg work. From the little finger, draw up into the outer shoulder and turn your triceps and turn your toes under and push back into Anamukha Swanasana, so downward facing dog. As you push your hands down and forward, you should feel the weight come back into the legs. Okay. In the middle of your thighs, push your thighs back even more. See how this dog feels. It's a little better, come all the way up onto the balls of the feet. So your feet really look like they're chaturanga dandas in the feet. And roll over the balls of the feet and reach your heels back. Adhimukha Svanasana, first dog of the day, at least for me. Well, actually, I guess it's my fourth dog of the day because I have three dogs in the house. Right, and then come all the way up and come into Tadasana, that one goes. Oh, Sopo, hello. There we go, okay. There we go. Right, as you stand here in Dandasana, just feel the opening that has come in the front groin from having done all of that seated work. I so I feel more open here, and I also feel that my hips have compacted inward. Right. Lengthen up through your side ribs and roll your shoulder bones back. Bring your shoulder blades in, away from the neck, and into the center of the body and up a little bit. So again, that upward lift of the chest is like an ice cream cone coming out the cup. I think of it as an ice cream cone shape. So the bottom of the ice cream cone is kind of right here. And it just makes an ice cream cone shape back out to the top of the ice cream cone here. And I guess my head is like the scoop of ice cream. Jeff and I are planning on making um, some berry ice cream today with these wild berries that we found in Colorado, so ice cream is on my mind. <laughs> All right, but stand in Tadasana. Squeeze your legs together too, so you can really feel your outer hips draw in. And then go ahead and get a chair. Oh, actually, wait, we're not gonna use a chair anymore. You do need your strap though. No visible puppy slobber on my strap, so that's great. I'm going to make a loop with the strap that's about the distance of my collarbone on the loop. So when I put the strap on, I put it on my elbows, and I can reach the strap, all, my arms all the way above the head, and hopefully the strap just clears my head. And go ahead and just do that in Urdhva Hastasana here. <laughs> If it messes your hair up, it's okay. All right, and then come down. And then just hold the strap in your right hand. We're gonna do a little bit of work for Virabhadrasana one. Okay. I'm gonna use the wall for my back leg. Okay, so I've got my back right foot against, left foot against the wall. And then I take a big step forward with my right leg. And then I start to get things organized. Okay, so I can tell my back leg is not really straightening like I want it to. 
And so I'm going to push from that top thigh back toward the wall through the heel so my back leg gets straighter. I do want to bring my hips more toward Tadasana, but truthfully, if you look in Virabhadrasana 1 in Light and Yoga, his pelvis is not quite even, but his chest is turned all around. So get your pelvis as level as you can, but know that it's not going to be in Tadasana. Then from there, push back into your heel again and turn your torso, though, a little bit more toward the front of the room. Now put your strap on and reach your arms all the way up above your head. Extend through your ring fingers and back through your heels. Reach up with your arms and keep your back leg as strong as you can and keep your torso as upright as you can and come down into Virabhadrasana 1. Extend from the buttocks through the back of the knee, that sitting bone through the back of the knee and sit a little bit lower. Check back in at your back leg and see if it needs more straightening. And then stretch down, well, release down with your groin and up with your fingers and come into bear one. Then reach with your arms up as you come all the way back up. Bring your hands down. Come into Tadasana. I do feel more opening in my uh, the back leg groin. Right, then do the same thing on the other side. Bring the opposite leg back and get heel against the wall. Your feet are turned at like a, somewhere between a 45 degree angle from the wall and maybe going towards 60, okay? And then stretch the opposite leg out. The more you turn the foot to face the front of the room, the easier it is to bring the back leg around. But when you turn your foot too much, you actually bypass some of the work of opening that back groin. So you want to, play with that a little bit. It might be the case if you don't turn the foot quite so much, the actual yield will be greater in the opening of the front groin. But then I know that my back leg is not completely straight, so I'm going to press that middle thigh to top my back and extend from the buttock to the heel to get the leg straight. And I turn my torso a little bit more, put my strap on on my elbows and lift up. Extend up through your ring fingers, push back through the heels, and then extend from that front sitting bone through the back of the knee as you sit down and come into Vera 1. Re-straighten your back leg if you lost any of that stability, and then bend your knee. Vera Bhadra was a warrior, and there are three warrior poses. So sometimes this is called warrior one. Press more into your back leg, and come all the way up, I mean, that's sometimes all the time. But <laughs> then come all the way back to the center. Okay, uh, we're going to do Vera 1 again. Okay. That's just another name for Vera Vidrasana because it's easier to say Vera and the whole long Vera Vidrasana. Yeah. Yeah. All right, but it's a little bit confusing actually because there is a seated pose that's called Virasana. Okay. okay. But which, speaking of which, we're actually in some ways getting ready to do a standing, uh, standing virasana, but it's called ekapada be, utita beka, utita ekapada bekasana. Okay, that sounds really long, but if you break it down, we know all the words. Utita means upright. Okay, eka means one, pada means a foot, and bekasana. You might not know that one, but it means a frog. Okay, so ekapada bekasana, utita ekapada bekasana. I am holding on to the wall for balance with my right hand. I'm going to do my left leg first. You don't have to use the wall. You can also just do it freestanding. Okay. All right, but maintain the Tadasana of your right leg and bend your left knee up back behind you. We're actually going to do two versions of this. The first version, you're going to bring your sitting, get your foot, and you're going to bring your sitting bone as much as you can right in line with your heel, or the heel in line with the sitting bone. So actually it's a little bit more like Vajrasana, the lightning bolt pose. You're also stretching the top of the foot, that's good. Now engage your hamstrings and your buttocks toward each other. Stay as upright as you can, but now kick your foot into your hand and let your knee move a little bit back behind the other knee and you should feel a significant amount of opening on that front groin of the leg, or at least I do. Now keep moving your hamstrings and your buttocks toward each other. 
pull your knee back toward your buttocks, and then move the, sorry, pull the foot back toward the buttocks and your knees back together. All right, now see, can you move your foot out to the side of the hips and keep pulling on the foot with your hand. And when I do that different foot movement, I get more release or more depth in the inner groin. And then bring the leg down. So when I keep my foot right on the heel, where I feel the stretch, okay, is right in the front of the pelvis and the front of the top thighs. But when I move my foot where it's on the outside of the hip, that second one that's more like Virasana, then I feel depth right in that inner groin. Like there's a release of tension straight back through the whole pelvis. Okay, so just by little tiny change in the foot in that pose results in different openings in the hips. Yeah, I find that just fascinating why that would be the case. Okay, so hold on to the wall with your hand. You can turn, it, turn around. Okay. That helps you with the utita part, right? The upright part. Maintain as much uprightness on the side of the left side of your body as you can as you bend your right knee up and get your foot. Sometimes I have a hard time getting my foot and I realize if I come up onto my ball of my foot of my standing leg, it's easier to get the foot. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is try and pull the foot in where the heel touches the sitting bone if possible. It also teaches you to hold on to the foot really well, which you need for some poses. Now stay as uchita, stay as upright as you can. Move your hamstrings and your buttocks toward each other and just kick the foot back into your hand. Like you were doing Dhanurasana almost. But you don't have to do a big back bend in your upper body. And just observe where you feel the opening feeling in the front of the groin and then the quadriceps. Then bring the foot back where the heel and the buttocks and the knees are all in a line. And then move your foot out to the extent you can to the side of the hip and observe how that opens the inner groin a little bit more. Okay. And then release and come down and stand in Tadasana. So you probably, yeah, now that I'm standing in Tadasana, I really feel the cumulative effect of that for me was, yes, more vertical opening, but I'm also feeling more horizontal opening now. So now when we go back and do Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1, you sh it should be easier to straighten the back leg, but also the depth feeling that you got should make it easier to really come down and get into that square in Virabhadrasana 1. So put your left foot back on the wall again if you want the support of the wall and take a big step forward with your right foot. Oh yeah, huge difference. Yeah. So now my back thigh is not sort of screaming at me, but I still have to know I need to straighten it a little bit. Okay, it wasn't maybe screaming, it was just saying, yowza, that's a stretch. Push back the, the thigh back, but also you have to extend from the femur bone through the heel. Then turn your, Torso just a little bit more. Keep your hands on your hips. Roll your shoulder bones back. Now, press back into your heel and from your front sitting bone, bend your knee. So keep the active work rooting through the back leg. Keep lengthening up through the sides of the torso as you bend down. So it should feel a little lighter. It does for me anyway. Move your outer hips in and reach your arms up into Urdhva Hastasana. Then reach up a little bit more and see if you can sit a little bit deeper by extending from the sitting bone through the back of the knee. And then press into the both heels as you come back up. Bring your hand all the way back to your hip. And then turn and come back to the center. Woo. Yeah, it's good, huh? Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I actually feel taller on my the side of my back leg from having done that. All right, that's last bear of a one. So you're going to put your heel back at the wall. Take a big step forward with your other leg. First, get your back leg straight. Then turn your hips so they're almost level. Okay? But really and truly, the back pelvic bone is a little further back than the front one. Okay? That's even the case in light and yoga. 
Harry Torso a little bit more though. Okay, so there's actually kind of the beginning almost of a like Pari Vita Trikonasana in this pose. All right, lengthen up through your side ribs. Make sure your chest is nice and lifted and supported by using your shoulder blade actions and then press into your back heel as you from your front sitting bone extend that through the back of the knee. I can use a little bit more height. Now make sure your back leg is still straight. Sit a little bit lower, lengthen up through your side ribs and reach your arms all the way up. And as you reach your arms up, it takes some of the weight off of the pose. So maybe you can sit a little bit lower. Keep pressing through that back heel as you sit deeper into the pose and then come all the way back up and then straighten your leg and come back to Tadasana. All right, now your chair comes into the picture. You do not need a chair that has the back taken out of it. However, the universe is presenting you with an excellent opportunity to procure a yoga chair for yourself through a Castle Hills prop sale. So if you do not have one yet, get one. It will change your life. In many ways. I was mentioning, I think on Thursday, that doing chair vibrated on us and a chair backbone, which maybe we'll look at today, um, was one of the two poses that really made me feel like I would do yoga for the rest of my life because I could just feel its transformative effect. Um, but for this, what we're going to do is we're going to work on a couple of versions of Virabhadrasana too. Um, you'll definitely need one block. And if your legs are on the shorter side, you're probably going to need two blocks. Okay. And I want to go through kind of the thinking of this. So a lot of times in Iyengar yoga, um, particularly like, you know, people are stiffer or weaker or, you know, blessing in some way. There are all kinds of ways to do uh, your standing poses with the chair. Okay? So, for instance, for years, I've known about this pose, Virabhadrasana 2, on a chair. But it's never really been that comfortable a pose for me. Okay? As I'm sitting here in Virabhadrasana 2, just straight on the chair. One, my feet don't quite go to the chair to the floor, but almost, but it just feels like I'm get. it just feels like it's not support, it's not opening anything. I'm just kind of wedged here in my tightness. But I was pondering things the other day from something else that I learned that I'll share with you in a second. Um, I said, you know what, what if I put a block on the chair and when I'm going to sit on the block, I really want to make sure that hamstring connection and my sitting bone are on the block. Okay. Now, because I've raised the chair and I'm going to do that same pose, I also, because I'm short, have to put a brick underneath my feet. Okay. Those of you who are taller of legs, you might not need to do that. If you don't have two bricks, you should know that well, there are all kinds of things in the house that work like bricks do, like books. Now, when I have given myself more height, and you can probably see this on the screen, I'm, I'm more lifted, and it has much more of a feeling of ease in the pose for me. I can also really get the angle of my leg coming out from my torso is much more at the 90 degrees than it needs to be for Virabhadrasana too. And it's easier on this back leg. I have more space on the back leg because it's not jammed against the corner of the chair. So hopefully this is a pleasant experience for you as well. Okay. Hmm? So this is called Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Okay. If it is not a pleasant experience for you, you can do it without the brick. You could do it with the support of the wall. You could just do the whole full pose. Okay. And the knee tends to come towards like towards the inside. Yeah, so what I, I find it does that much less when I'm on the brick, okay? Uh, but what you can do is sit up a little bit and see 
then can you move your knee actually back a little bit and your sitting bone forward? And see if you can get it a little bit more at that 90 degrees. But yeah, that's the tendency, but that's also the tendency without the chair too, right? Okay, so this is Vera 2. Now think of the pose that we did before, Vera Vidrasana 1. And from Vera 2, if you lift up and turn your torso where it faces the bent leg, lo and behold, we're in Vera Vidrasana 1 again. Then you can use your hand on the back of the chair and actually turn a little bit like you would be doing the upright preparation for a revolve pose. And for me, that feels fantastic across the sacrum. Then just retrace your steps back to Vera 1, back to kind of a Vera 2, and then hoist yourself out of the chair. Stand in Tadasana and see if you can feel the difference in the sides. So the side that I just twisted to, and that it feels more spacious in the pelvic region. And even up into my brain, there's a feeling of kind of relaxation. Okay. Now, if you want to run the, if you didn't like the brick, you don't have to use it. I mean, if the chair itself works just fine for you, you can do that. Okay. For me, I have more, much more both steer us stability and also ease when I use the two bricks. When I'm just sitting down on the chair, I might be stable, okay, but I'm stuck. Okay. And that stuckness of the tightness of the groin just makes the whole pose, I can't get any mental ease either. Ease either. So just by changing a little bit of the shape of the pose, basically by making myself taller. But also there's something in the support that's more focused, not on the whole thigh, but on the sitting bone that also makes all of this easier. And then I, you know, you might have to, Pratima, you're absolutely right. I mean, on this side, it's tighter. So my knee is moving a little bit toward the screen. So knowing that I stand up a little bit and then see if I can turn my thigh flesh more up toward the ceiling. And then when I sit down, I want to angle the knee back so it's a little bit straighter. And then, <clears throat> yeah, you got Vera Vidrasana too. Turn your head also and look toward the battle. And this is a warrior pose, but basically a battle is any difficult circumstance in life. So to have the equanimity yeah, to face the difficulties of life with both stability and with ease, okay, you have to look at what is actually in front of you, but you also have to have support or stability with the back arm and the back leg. Right? All right, and then bring your hands down. Now see if you can come up turn your torso and your hip. Now when the back heel is up in this pose, of Vera, this version of Vera Bhadrasana 1, it is more possible to get the hips on more parallel. But it's a variation of the pose. All right, then go ahead and just add a little twist on this side and turn toward the back of the chair. And then come back to the center and then hoist yourself off of the chair and then stand into Dasana again. It's a great hip opener, I think. <clears throat> All right. And you don't have to sit through the chair. And if you don't have a chair you can sit through, I'll give you something else to do when we're getting ready to do a chair back then today, because I think I said we would. I got that version of Vera 2 and Vera 1 from a version of um, Parjahita Hastapadangushtasana, where you actually put your leg over the back of the chair, and you try and get that handle of the chair 
we've done this one in this class, right on your sitting bone as much as possible. And that support of the sitting bone from underneath releases the groin from on top. If you are taller than me, you can move this leg out wider so you have the support of the chair or you can add height with blankets underneath the chair. Uh, today, I'm actually feeling this would all go better for me if <clears throat> I have these fancy shoulder stand bones. You don't have to have one, but you could get a brick. Brick would be too much for most people, but maybe just like a old telephone book or the right kind of book that you don't mind standing on. Okay. So I made myself a little taller. So if I move your foot out a little bit away from your body so that, yeah, so you have more of that 90 degree angle with your leg. So when I'm, now, now Prajima, I notice when I'm here, my knee is in fact at this angle. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is see, can I walk my other standing leg forward a little bit and wiggle that leg back a little bit so I'm more in a 90 degree angle. I get more, hopefully more <coughs> of the leg shooting straight out from the side of the body. Yeah. All right, and then bring that leg down and just stand into the asana. And hopefully you'll, you'll feel how that woke up the sitting bone, right? And you got more release in the groin. That, that's how I extrapolated to the brick. Like, oh, well maybe if I got a little bit more support from underneath, the toes would feel better. So now you're gonna do your other leg. And if you have a much taller chair, right, than the yoga chairs, you might need to stand up on a brick. It's fine. You know, we're all different sizes. The chairs more or less are the same size. I will say the castle little chairs that are padded are a little bit taller. They're good for some things. My own preference is just the plain old folded chair. The other thing you can do to get the leg more going straight out, again, is to come up under the toes, tuck, externally rotate that thigh and move the knee back a little bit with your hand and you turn your torso away from your leg. And yeah, I feel both stability and I feel more ease, sukha coming through the groin. I guess you could think of this as a version of tree pose too. All right, and then come back to the center, stand into dasana, feel the stira or the stability of your, of your outer hips and the opening in the front groin. Okay, if you do not have a chair that you can uh, go through with your legs, okay, there are a couple of things you can try. Okay. Some chairs don't have this brace, and so sometimes you can find a chair this, that you don't even have to go through. Okay. You can lie back on the chair okay, and just use the seat of the chair. Yeah, you see how I'm doing a back bend on the side of the chair? I'm not even putting my feet through the chair. So maybe you have a flat back dining chair. Maybe you have a, you, a, this thing that doesn't have anything knocked out of it. So it's possible. Okay. If you don't have that, Yeah, I'm not, I know everyone's circumstances are different, but you know, we're in this Zoom yoga game at home for a while. I would say, if not now, when, in terms of getting yourself a yoga chair. So I've got one block, actually everyone can try this and then we'll do the chair. I've got one block that's spine wise. And I'm laying down on it. And then I want a little bit of support for my head, so I'm turning the other block on its medium height. Okay. So everyone just try that. And it should feel good okay. that you're using the support of the brick underneath 
to get your chest to be open. Okay, I'm gonna go take it. On its second huh? height? Is the spine brick on its first or second height? It's on its third. For me, well, you can choose. Right now, it's on its first height. Okay. okay. So for right now, starting out for everyone, the bottom brick is on, like Vicky said, its first height. But when you, if you do it a second time instead of the chair, you can make it go on its second height, and you can even make it go on its third height. But I would suggest just starting off with it in its flat height. Okay. I'm just checking in for those of you I can see. Oh yeah, that looks good, Pratima. Okay. Go ahead and let your legs do uh, Dandasana. Don't let them flop out because okay. we're still pretending it's like a chair back then. Okay. Carolyn, get the, the, is the brick up in your top chest or is it on your sacrum? You want it on your top chest. Okay, everyone uh, bend your knees, come out of the pose. Okay, this is, it's hard to explain or hard to show, but it's not brick satubanda. Okay. That's when it's on your sacrum. Your, your brick on its flat height is up here around your shoulder blades. It's not, this one, it's not down here. That's a totally different pose. What you're wanting here is the brick to open your chest. Your buttocks will be on the floor, okay? All right, so try it one more time, either flat, or if you feel like you could get a little bit more opening, you can put the spine brick on its second height. Okay. So to get in there, I just sit on the floor, hold on to the brick with my hand so I can place the brick right around my shoulder blades. I start off with my legs bent. I might need a little bit more height underneath the head, so you might need your head brick to be a little bit, oh, this feels wonderful. And then you can straighten your legs out. You can actually put your legs in any leg position you want. But basically what you should be feeling <clears throat> is that the brick is opening the chest, all right? Now to make it be a little bit more like a chair, take the brick that you're laying on and make it be horizontal to the spine and then lay back on the black brick. So basically you've turned the brick into the seat of the chair. So this is what you can stay in and do if you don't have a chair to put your feet through or to drape yourself over. And you can also kind of play with exactly where you want the block, you know, the block really just feels pretty fantastic. Why bother with the chair? No. <laughs> but <clears throat> here is the pose, and I'm getting ready to teach you. You can bend your knees and come up. That made me realize that I wanted to do yoga for the rest of my life. One is the strap on the trapezius, the shoulder strap thing. It's like, well, that's easy. And it works really well. <clears throat> but I, I didn't have a yoga chair right away. I did have these folding padded chairs that had enough space. I think they actually belonged to a friend of mine. She gave them to me and they were funeral parlor chairs. Her dad was a funeral director. But then eventually I got a yoga chair not too long after that. And I like to put a sticky mat on the chair. <clears throat> Partly because I don't want to slide. Yeah. Oh, sometimes also when you move your head back, it's too much on people's necks. So you, you can also have brick support for your head if you think you need it. But then what I do is I put one foot through the back of the chair and sit down. Lift up, put the other foot through the back of the chair. Then, there are lots of ways to get into this, right? but 
I like to move, lay down on the chair and move my buttocks a little bit off the chair. So now basically what's happened is that the chair, if you think about it, is just like a giant brick, right? That you're laying on. And then you can adjust your head support if you feel like you're gonna need it. I've been needing it more lately. This feels good. Yeah. And you're still getting the same opening in the chest. And then after a while, I can take the support away. So I've got my knees bent. Now remember that Ekapada Vekasana, I'm not even doing anything with my hands yet. They're just kind of holding on. Press your feet down and move your hamstrings and your buttocks toward each other. That action of the legs, you really have to maintain, and you may feel that you're getting more opening in the front of the groin. I'm going to take my head support away now, but you're welcome to keep it. Because now my head, <coughs> you can't arch that. I'm holding onto the sides of the chair, and I'm pulling down on the chair, so I get a little bit of coiling in my back body. I check in that my legs are still working. So you know, I'm gonna change the position of the chair on my torso a little bit, just because I feel it would be more effective opening a little lower on the spine. Then if you can, you walk your hands through the insides of the chair to get either the sticky mat tail or the sides of the chair or the chair back and pull and you get a little bit more opening in the chest. Raise your head. Oh, feels great. All right, then. Okay. You're going to come out of the pose. Y'all are going to go back in. <coughs> but <coughs> you may <coughs> observe that that made me cough a little bit because it's opening the chest and it relaxes also some sinus pressure that I have. And that, that feeling coming out of the chair of just sinus pressure gaining and the chest feeling more open uh, to me it was like you know there's really something to this yoga mm -hmm. so that is the pose that is why i'm here today basically chair back bend all right so go ahead and get in your chair <laughs> you know you can also put a brick underneath your sacrum if you want mm -hmm. Suki, you look like you're a little bit too far off the chair toward your head side. So maybe see if you can scoot a little bit more toward your leg side. That looks pretty good, Bob. I think, Bob, you could also slide maybe a little bit more toward your head side, I think, but that's pretty good opening. There isn't just one right place to be. In fact, if you have a lot of time on your hands, you could start off on the top of your spine and work down each vertebra and you'll get a slightly different opening. That looks good, Sopo. That looks good, Chaya. You might experiment, Chaya, with, no, oh, actually that looks really good, but you could come off a little bit more. That looks pretty good, Melinda. That is a really lovely shaped arc, Marsha. Yeah, you know, and Carolyn is doing it with the chair that doesn't have the back in it, and that works pretty well. Okay. Carolyn, though, you have to, if you can, slide a little bit more through the chair. Yeah, there you go. Even a little bit more if you can. Yeah, I mean, don't get stuck or anything, but I mean. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna give you instead, Carolyn? Carolyn, go ahead and come out of the pose. I'm gonna give you a different uh, way of working. So you can put the chair against the wall, but you can sit in front of the chair and just lift your buttocks up and let your head kind of rest on the chair. And I think you'll have a little bit more success with that. And then you can also just sit in front of the chair and kind of lift up and back and your back can get more open. Is that good? Yeah. That's You might want to, oh, you couldn't see, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, you just, what I would kind of want is your head to go back a little bit more, Carolyn. Can you see my chair now? Yes, okay. So if you just are in front of the chair and put your back on the chair 
and then kind of navigate with your <laughs> hit that thing and then you can lift your buttocks up and then you'll get some nice opening and you can also kind of come out a little bit so you get some opening in your chest and push up i think that'll open your back more than how you were basically doing reverse <laughs> Yeah, no, that looks good. Okay, y'all have been in there a long time. All right, some of you have already come out. All right, bend your knees, make sure your buttocks are on the chair. That looks good again, Cliff. And then come all the way up. And then just sit up straight and tall. Yeah, that, look, that looks like it worked pretty well, Carolyn. And just feel the, what do I wanna say? Energy of the pose. Mm -hmm. The effect of the pose. And that's yoga. All right. Now, everyone. Oh, uh, we don't have. Oh, we do. Everyone put your chair. You don't need the back of the chair now to go through. Just put your chair against the wall if you, if you can. If you, if you can't put your chair against the wall, it's okay. Um, you're just going to hold on. Okay. I'm going to move my setup a little bit, so hopefully you can see it. All right. Yes. Oh, good. You can see. Can, you, oh, there's an excellent view of my chair. Okay. There's my chair. This is a version of a chair sarvangasana chair. If you don't have blankets, you can do it flat on the floor. Okay. But if you do have blankets, Set up your shoulder stand blankets in front of the chair. So the folded edge of your blankets that your neck is going to be on are uh, oh, facing the same direction as the chair is facing. Okay. I like four blankets. Uh, I have these white Puna blankets and they're, um, they're kind of thinner than the big striped Mexican blankets. Then you just take a look, you can either use a washcloth or take something so your head isn't on your sticky mat. Okay. Some of you are taller than I am. And so you might need to move your blankets a little bit <clears throat> and put a brick there for your buttocks. Now, I'm going to watch for a second. What we're going to do is, I think you can, okay, you can't see my head, but you can see everything else. My head, there's my head. My head is on the floor. And my shoulders are on the blanket, and my feet are on the chair. And then my buttocks, I'm going to hold on to the chair legs with my hands. Then you have to navigate your buttock around the chair. So this is called buttock navigation. See my buttock is under the chair. It navigates and zooms around. So it's on, still holding on to the chair. It's basically like doing Chatush Padasana, holding on to the chair. But you get a little bit more into shoulder stand and you can wiggle back and forth the shoulders under you more. Then you might be able to get your hands on your back and you might be able to come into full shoulder stand. But if you can't, you get a lot of good work just out of being on the chair. And then you come down, you buttock navigate around the chair. All right. <clears throat> that was really how I first learned to enjoy shoulder stand. Shoulder stand was not a pose that I liked right away. Headstand, no problem. Handstand, no problem. Penjumarasana, I couldn't do it all. It collapsed completely. And shoulder stand, I could just never feel comfortable in until I did this one, okay, walking up the chair. But if it doesn't work for you, Melinda, you could do a uh, legs up the wall pose, okay? If it doesn't work for anyone, legs up the wall pose is fine. Everybody just, yeah, 
That's it, Chaya. Now walk your shoulders a little bit more underneath you. Lift your buttocks up. There you go. Can you get your elbows in a little bit more, Pratima? That looks good, Gay and Cliff. Huh? Bob, you're listing way over to the left. There you go. <laughs> Bob, yeah, you keep on listening to the left. Pratima, that looks good. Caroline, that looks good too, from what I can see. Sugi, bring your feet a little, knees a little bit closer together. You can come down and rest whenever you need to. All right, good. Okay, now bend your knees, bring your feet back to the chair, you can roll down into a lasana. Bring your buttocks down to the setup again, shoulder stand setup again. And you can actually, this is actually got a name now, I can't remember what it's called, it's something called Viparita, I can't remember, some kind of inverted, maybe it's a Viparita Shavasana, I can't remember. If you're comfortable here and you just want to stay in this position, you're welcome to. Uh, another thing you can do is move the chair a little bit. Well, you can move, your, you can get the chair out of the way. You could also slide further off toward your head side and just keep your legs up on the support of the blanket. It's also a lovely thing to do to put your legs in Bodhikanasana or Swastikasana here. But working like that with the chair was really, and get really getting my shoulders underneath me was a big breakthrough in my own shoulder stand practice very early on. Uh, this, that was around the time of my practice where I also was talking to you about a chair um, back bend and how great it was. Okay, so just kind of come into whatever feels good to you for Shavasana, okay? Let your eyes release away from the back of your head. Let your tongue release away from the roof of your mouth. Unclench the jaw. Let the back of the throat release. Let the sides of the throat release. Let the base of the throat release. Let your ears draw inward. Completely relax the features of your face become quiet within. Patanjali defines yoga as stira sukham asana. Well, asana is that. He defines yoga as stilling the fluctuations of the mind. And asana is just one of the many tools that he talks about that help us get that sense of inner quietude. That's the real sukha of yoga. But to have that requires enormous stability. So partly we do the asana to build up the stability of the body and the mind so that we have more ability to control the fluctuations of our consciousness. Be in that space. Abide there. Consciously use your inhalations now to bring that sense of inner stability, that experience of your true self with you as you go about your work in the world. Pull your knees up into your chest and roll off of your setup over to your right side and use your hands to press yourself back up. <clears throat> Sit up straight and tall, lift your chest well, close your eyes and fold your palms together at your heart. Observe the effect that your practice has on you. Observe it on every layer of your being. 
from the physical to the most deeply spiritual. And gratitude to the benefit you receive from your practice of yoga. Gratitude to the people of the opportunity to learn and study and practice yoga with. And in gratitude to the lineage of Atha Yoga itself is practiced by Bhikkhu Sayangar, reaching back to the sages of India and down through a line of teachers and students to you here on the mat in Austin, Texas, or wherever you happen to be in the world, Paris, France, Waco, Texas, wherever you are, yoga is with you, without, with or without Zoom. Namaste.